Tonight on The Roast, Corey Bernardi says he has proof that same-sex marriage leads to polygamy and bestiality, and a study finds that news and current affairs shows make up half of Australian TV content. But first, Australia's 1-0 victory over Iraq last night means the Socceroos are off to the 2014 Football World Cup. It was a match that had everything. 82 minutes of nothing, then a goal, then 10 minutes of nothing. And the Sydney Morning Herald wasted no time in reminding us this was the most decisive victory over over Iraq since 2003. Though based on that, last night's match might still be going in 10 years' time. Still getting into the Rio World Cup was a huge moment and the crowds went nuts. They were celebrating on the field. They were celebrating in the stands. Heck, they were even celebrating in Rio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right back at you, Rio. We'll see you soon. Hmm? Th that was a protest. Really? <laughs> wow. So, what, Brazil was going for Iraq? Uh, the protests began hey! 10 days ago, initially over a plan to hike bus fares, but they quickly expanded beyond that. The protesters say the government spending to host lavish, high profile events is coming at the expense of the poor. Why is Brazil protesting that? Everyone knows the best footballers in the world come from the most impoverished nations. So by spending $16.5 billion on the games, Brazil's just making sure it stays horribly poverty-stricken and therefore really good at football. And as for the public transport thing, they should be thankful because the only time public transport actually works is when you're going to a sporting event. Back when Sydney hosted the 2000 Olympics, our train and bus timetables were true representations of when our trains and buses would actually run. You are so right, Tom. Hey, Brazil, we'll take it if you don't want it. What? Well, if Rio doesn't want the World Cup, we'll take it. We already spent $45 million in our bid to host the 2018 and 2022 World Cups, so we'll just take this one if Brazil doesn't want it. Yeah, but FIFA voted a couple of years ago and we only got one vote. No one wants Australia to host. Well, yes, admittedly our bid did make some mistakes. We shouldn't have told everyone we can kick a ball hundreds of kilometres. Of course we scared FIFA. But I really think I've got the right approach with this new campaign bid. Brazil, let's be honest, you don't want to host the World Cup and no one wants Australia to host it, so this time, why don't you let Australia be Brazil? Brazil can't afford the World Cup, but we can just dig up more of this stuff to pay for it. <laughs> Brazil is overrun with desperately poor people, but we don't let them into this country. We're so diverse, we have no single national culture, so we'll just use yours. Now estamos brasileira. How about it, Brazil? Why don't you give the substitute a run this World Cup? Until 2014, hooroo, amigos. So what do you think? Yeah, I could get on board with it. I mean, if we're prepared to change the Carl Expressway into the Timmy Kale Expressway just for a football game, why not change the whole country into Brazil just for a football tournament? Yeah, now you're coming to La Fiesta. Australia are fantastic hosts, and hosting these things doesn't bankrupt our country, it improves our country. So that's why we can become anything for everyone. We'll become Denmark for Eurovision. <laughs> we'll become Northern Ireland for the G8. And we'll become America for the Miss America pageant. Because then we can relate this back to education and how we're continuing to try to strive to figure out how to create jobs right now. And so we need to try to figure out how to create education better so that we can solve this problem. Thank you. Next up tonight, South Australian Liberal Senator Corey Bernardi says he has proof that legalising same-sex marriage could be a slippery slope to accepting polyamory and even unions between people and animals. Polyamory, of course, meaning having multiple romantic partners at the one time. And Bernardi's proof comes from the esteemed British journal of Facebook on the page for Polyamory Action Lobby, which recently launched a petition demanding nothing less than a full recognition of polyamorous families. So it turns out Bernardi was right. Legalising same-sex marriage in Australia has led to polyamory, even without Australia actually legalising same-sex marriage. Or polyamory. But Bernardi's comments have been criticised by both major parties who disapprove of his anti-gay marriage stance because it's far too extreme compared to their very anti-gay marriage stance. But we here at The Roast, we're not ones to just disregard an opinion out of hand, which is why our sociological investigator Jazz Twemlow has spent the last year investigating Bernardi's statements about this slippery slope. Where did this slippery slope start? What is at its depraved end? 
Same-sex marriage, polygamous marriage, interspecies marriage, then what? Interspecies, polyamorous, lesbian, ghost dog marriage? We've got to get off the slippery slope, or Bernardi have mercy on us all. And then we're going to marry pets. So we're going to have to get rid of pets, because if we don't have pets, we won't be able to marry them. <laughs> Goodbye, sweet prince. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to do this. <laughs> no, it's better if you don't speak. Goodbye, sweet prince. <laughs> now, same-sex marriage. We need to divide the sexes. Yes, because if, if men can't talk to other men, then they won't become gay and subsequently marry animals for some reason. Good night, sweet prince. No, wait. I'm your brother. <laughs> So close! I'm so close! <laughs> I found it! It's the start of Bernardi's slippery slope! It's heterosexual marriage, of course! It's a gateway to same sex marriage, which leads to bestiality and then lesbian ghost dog marriage! I must abolish all marriage to save humanity. Here comes the bride! Here comes the bullet! <laughs> Something bad, something dead. <laughs> Finally tonight, a study has found that almost half of Australia's local television production is made up of news and current affairs shows. The study by the Australian Bureau of Statistics monitored 80,000 hours of free-to-air television and found that more than 36,000 hours was news and current affairs content. Now we wanted to talk to the person who watched the 80,000 hours of television, but they died after watching 80,000 hours of television. But media analyst Brian Hand says we do have a local content quota in Australia and that is obviously more economically met by using current affairs instead of the more expensive local drama. But the benefit of making drama is that a successful show has valuable longevity and long-term monetization potential through things like merchandise and DVD sales. So if Australia's looking for a local drama with merchandising potential and one that's cheap to make, look no further than our show, The News. Hi, I'm David. I'm the new journalist. Hi, hey, everyone. Fresh meat. Ah! What? Hello. You must be fresh meat. I'm David. Please, come in. Meet some of the team. Um, this is Mark. Mark is trying to book some talent for his story about Australia going to Rio. Uh, well, what do you mean Peter Allen's dead? Somebody get me Todd McKenney! Oh, that's just Sean. Sean throws the paper. The studio. Oh, 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 this is Jess. Oh, hi. hi. Nice Why do you have camo on your face? Oh, this, this. I was doing a story about Bernardi and things got a little bit out of control. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Tom over there. Oh, hi, Tom. Don't talk to Tom. It starts out as chit chat. The next thing you know, he's making you take a shower with him. To the writers' room. <laughs> Researchers. <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> Nick. This is Dave. Hey, Dave. Hi, Nick. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Nick's wife died in a car accident on Tim Cahill Expressway last night. <laughs> so we got him a puppy. I miss him so much. Will you marry me? <laughs> this is Ahmed. He does the graphics. Hi. Just remember this. Check your facts. Stay away from Tom at all costs. Okay. Hey, whoa, 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 I gotta go. My favourite character's Tom. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and you can catch all 365 episodes of The News now on DVD and Blu-ray. Good night. <laughs>